What's going on everyone, my name is Tenebris Infinite, and Atomic Heart is an extremely nuanced video game with massive amounts of exploration, combat, crafting, and character progression. It's a pretty deep video game, and there's a lot to learn and make sense of, especially in your first five or so hours of the game. So today, I've put together some of the best tips and tricks to help you out in your adventures through the utopian downfall of Atomic Heart. I've set up this video in three parts, so if any of them strike your interest, please follow the timestamps. But we'll start off with exploration, then move on to combat, then lastly cover some farming tips for resources. Again, all the timestamps are in the description down below, and now, without any further waiting, let's get on with these tips. So the first tip for exploration is to be thorough. You can rush through Atomic Heart pretty quickly, but if you take your time to look around the small city you're driving by, or searching every corner of the facility you're in, you'll wind up paying off better in the end. Take for instance gathering weapons. You can only do this by finding large boxes that then will give you a weapon kinda at random. There are set locations for things, but a lot of these boxes will give you just random items. So if you miss something along the way, you can always find it through just a bit of exploration. As well as shutting down hawk systems. You'll need to explore for the right camera point to unlock the door and shut down the hawk system for a brief period of time, which then will allow you to go off and loot and explore even further without being harassed by robots the entire time. Every time you want to overload the relay here, and I'll show you why in just a moment, but exploration can yield you a ton of things from more fights, allowing you to get more resources, to finding hidden loot caches that again will give you more resources to use in your fights. So again, you'll want to find camera locations so you can hack into hawk systems and further extend your ability to explore and loot an area without being swarmed by machines. But as you explore, you'll find new, better fight encounters and have the resources to deal with them. And as an extra side tip, you can destroy the robots repairing the hawk system after overloading it, extending your time to explore a location almost indefinitely. And for our last tip for exploration, be sure to send things to Nora often. That horny vending machine is good for having almost infinite storage in it. So anything you can't make use of, store for later to either disassemble into resources or use along the way. Now for combat, and this first one ties into exploration, but is much more useful when you use it for both exploration and combat. That is multi-dodging. When you dodge, you move about 5 meters at a time, and when you hold dodge, you will automatically dodge with however many dodge charges you have. This gives a huge amount of opportunities, but the first is moving around the world faster, and considering how volatile cars can be, going on foot quickly can be a huge advantage from outrunning enemies to getting the jump on them early. If you're lucky and fast enough, you can even chain takedowns this way by just simply moving faster than the AI can react to. Dodging at every available opportunity is something I think a lot of people might miss, and it makes a huge difference in moment-to-moment -moment combat. The next tip for combat is using the environment. Doing stuff like jumping up ledges that will make the enemies have to vault up after you, which gives you a couple opportunities. Either they jump up after you and you can hit them while they're moving, or they'll stay on the ground and you can take them out without any problems at all. Or, for the more opportune moments, jumping over small obstacles that get the enemies to hop over. It opens them up entirely and gives you a huge opportunity to take advantage of which could be an essential when you're fighting tough enemies or groups of enemies. The next tip is essential, and it's one I warned you all about before the game launched. It's weak points. So on the more obscure robots, you need to really listen for what makes that ringing noise. 
On humanoid enemies, you can get away with headshots, and on some robots, you'll see the weak point as a glowing spot. These weak points make a huge difference in combat, and you'll want to take advantage of every opportunity you get as they can end fights incredibly quickly. On the same hand as weak points are vulnerabilities, which is what element an enemy is weak to. You can see this by simply scanning the enemy, but it could be a huge assist. If you combine weak points with the previous tip of getting enemies to follow you through the environment, you'll wind up being able to deal with huge hordes of enemies. And the tip to tie this all together is to watch enemy animations. For as beautifully well done as they are in the game, they are a huge tell for what the enemy will do, way beyond the glowing strong attacks. If you see an enemy swing suddenly or dodge your attack, be prepared to dodge theirs and go on the counter attack. The ebb and flow of Atomic Heart's combat is excellent and I think the best piece of advice is to get really into it, like watching for the smallest animation changes, and you'll get the most out of the entire combat system. And a final simple tip, don't forget to recharge your batteries. Take an opportunity when things are calm to run around in circles for a bit. You'll thank yourself later for having a full battery to bust out the blue BFG or your shock pistol or whatever energy weapon you have on hand. This will help you conserve ammo and just always be prepared for that next enemy that might cheese you into a corner. So for our last set of tips, I'm going to tell you how to farm some things. First up being resources, and most importantly, blueprints. You'll want to scan the environment as much as you possibly can. If you have a moment to breathe, scan while you take a second. If you shut down the hawk system, go loot crazy and scan for a good few minutes. There is loot crammed into every corner of this game, and there's so much loot that you'll get whatever you need from just a small matter of time going around specifically scanning and looting. And if you're ever looking for a specific resource, you can always go to Nora and see what drops what from the resource drop down menu. This is incredibly useful if you're seeking out something for a specific upgrade to a weapon. You'll gradually learn as you go along after reaching the open world what houses are best for looting, but if you ever feel like you missed something, again, just do a quick scan and you'll see all the loot in your given location. So for this next tip, you're going to need mass telekinesis and its upgrade that slams enemies. But for easy neuropolymer farming, especially in the early game, go to the spots where the repair drones come from, and use mass telekinesis to kill all of the drones that spawn in one fell swoop. You get like 5 to 6 neuropolymer, and it seems to last infinitely, so as long as you want to farm, you can hang out and take out these drones for easy neuropolymer to spend on your abilities. Then, you upgrade your mass telekinesis, and boom! Easy profit. And the last tip goes out to all of my fellow hoarders, but this game throws so many resources at you and so many opportunities to farm those resources that you really don't need to be stingy at all. Spread the communist wealth with Nora and craft to your heart's content. I'm the type of person that holds on to health items till I absolutely need them, but in Atomic Heart, you really can just craft as you go. There are so many Nora stations around that you could pop in and pick up the stuff that you're hoarding, or craft something new, and it comes at almost no expense once you start to really get going in the game. So there you have it, 10 tips and tricks that are going to set you up for a successful playthrough. Thinking of weak points, animations, and how to expose enemies to looting, finding weapons, and exploring, so you can always be fully supplied while fighting through Facility 3826. So I'd like to turn things over to you dudes. Anything you'd like some tips on here in Atomic Heart? I'm happy to help with anything, be it through comments or making a video if need be. 
I'm planning on tackling a bunch of stuff like how to access testing grounds, and I'm also still eyeballing some boss guides. But either way, for now, I want to say thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.